Alrighty, folks, it's a little after 11 o'clock at night here. And uh, as promised, here's your second video of the day. Meteorologist Michael Wilhein here with Southern Indiana Weather. Uh, as I posted on my page a little bit ago, it looks like we've got some interesting developments that have happened with our system tonight. And uh, the bus potential, at least for some of us, uh, is certainly on the rise. So let's get right into the data. Uh, first thing what you see is a huge swath of snow. Now this this is a little deceiving because our storm system uh, remember if I just take this off here where you can see it a little bit better uh, this is essentially the cold front and uh, the cold front is sort of uh, draping down like this but our uh, main weather maker is actually this right in here. Now you'll remember that I have been saying the favored track for this uh, has been sort of uh, in in this region and then tracking more north uh, from there but uh, that's the solution that the, the euro has been taking that's the solution that the gfs has been taking uh, that is not the current solution where the models have come in tonight with this thing is to take it pretty much right along the ohio river and then up now if that is the case that would dramatically lower our snow total so we want to get into that data and the other thing that I want to show you in addition to that is uh, I've talked a lot tonight about poor model performance and uh, I know a number of people have complained on the web page and look I understand about the complaints you know whenever we're I don't take it personal when folks say well you know you guys you weather men are are, uh, are paid to be wrong 50% of the time and uh, you know it always its forecast is always a bus it's it's never on you know or you always overhype it well we don't I try not to overhype things um, you know but the reality is we're only as good as uh, the computer models that we uh, can see are um, down to that it, it is um, we, we look at as meteorologists we look at the data and we use that data to come up with a forecast based off of our knowledge of basic meteorology and um, you can't always trust the models you have to know what you can trust and what you can't and uh, the truth of the matter is the models have just done an absolutely crappy job of handling this system so that's why you're seeing so much changes lately let me illustrate that for you I want to just throw our temperatures back here it's 11 o'clock at night let me zoom into Indiana here for you and we'll just throw the, the color fill on this as well just to make it look a little bit better and get rid of the radar and get rid of this. All right, so we're at 39 degrees here in Huntingburg right now, 41 in Evansville, 34 at the Indianapolis airport. What I want to do is go over here to the NAM model and show you where we should have been according to the NAM model. Now keep in mind, I've been critical of the NAM model because uh, it's had the, the track that took uh, the low uh, closest to the Ohio River took most of the snow away from us and became warmer when all the others weren't saying that. This is the model from this afternoon, the one o'clock initiation of the run, and this is where it says we should be temperature wise at 11 o'clock at night. Indianapolis should be down to, to uh, 28 degrees. We should be 31 here in Huntingburg. We should be 32 in Evansville. Look where we are. We should be 27 in Indianapolis. No, we're 34. We should be 31 in Huntingburg. No, we're 39. We should be 32 in, in uh, Evansville. Uh-uh, we're 41. My point is this, as you can see from this, the models have just done a terrible job with this. We're actually far warmer than the models are saying. So now, now let's apply that and say then, okay, can we really trust what the models are saying then about the snowfall accumulation amounts and all of these things no no we can't you're talking uh, is 31 was what we're supposed to be in Huntingburg is 39 you're talking an eight degree model eight degree difference that's huge and if you apply that to um, our snow situation if that trend continues my goodness that could be the difference between major snow and absolutely no snow whatsoever or minor amounts of snow I mean, as you go forward in time with the error. Um, so the reality is um, I have some problems with the way uh, these these models have been trending but here's the more troubling thing. If you are a snow lover you're not going to like what I'm about to say. If you're a snow hater you're going to love this but here's the, the bottom line of it. 
Keep in mind that this NAM solution that I'm having problems with right now, this was our warmest of the models. We're warmer than the warmest of the models. So if the warmest of our models, and let's go back to the 18Z, and this is the 12Z, 6Z, here's the 18Z. So this is what uh, this particular model with the temperatures showed for, uh, that I showed you, this is what it said for snowfall accumulations. Now, if it's already trending that bad and not handling the warm surge of air, what does that tell you? Can you trust these accumulations? No, what it's gonna tell you is they're gonna be what? Lower. Logically speaking, they're gonna be lower because you go warmer, that's gonna lower your snow accumulations amounts. So if, if you don't like snow, well then that's a good forecast for you because that looks like we're getting screwed over Southern Indiana for snow at this point, basically. Uh, the uh, the idea of a six to 12 inch snow that we had even a couple of days ago, now that's pretty much out of the equation down here now. It looks like Indianapolis will still be seeing that uh, and points to the north. It, it, it looks like the snow is really going to be confined from probably I-70 and, and northward at this point. So Terre Haute may be able to see some of these decent snowfall accumulations, but uh, in, in general speaking with this warmer surge of, of cold air moving in, um, that's going to be a problem. Now let me show you the GFS model that has come in as well. Um, the NAM, um, well, let me, let me show you that too, if I can find it here. Hold on, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm apologizing folks, I'm, I'm not as organized tonight, here it is. Here's what the 0Z uh, NAM did tonight. And you can see it, it continued to make that northwest shift with it. So here we are, um, here is uh, Vincennes right here. And uh, you can see Vincennes in this model depiction is right on the line between two and three inch amounts to six inch plus amounts. Notice the very sharp cutoff gradient for this. It gives Evansville almost nothing. Du Bois County, Orange County, even Bedford, almost nothing. And you have to get up to uh, the Bloomington and, and, and down through uh, Vincennes area, sort of on a diagonal here before you get any decent sized accumulations in the way that the dam is now taking it. Let's take a look at the GFS. The GFS is now in as well in its 0Z run. What I want you to see is notice a very similar look. I can't zoom it in on the on a, a tight Indiana gradient like I can uh, with the high resolution NAMs. So apologize for that. I wish I wish they would fix that. On this side I use where we could, it would be a lot nicer. But uh, what you see is that sort of same thing. And, and the GFS has it a little bit further south, but notice that it's a very similar. It's a very sharp cutoff with it. Uh, and the heavy accumulating snows, with this at least, stay confined really more to the north and northwest of us here in Indiana. So that would put us, most of us in southern Indiana, well below what we would consider a winter storm warning criteria. This would be winter weather advisory criteria for all of us, for the majority of us in southern Indiana. So I wouldn't be surprised if this trend continues to see the uh, National Weather Service actually cancel the winter weather winter storm warning and make us an advisory and, and shave some of that down. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm not going to say that it's going to happen, but that's certainly a possibility. Let's time it out real quick and, and show you where the GFS is, is showing. Here we are uh, about 1 a.m. So this is about two hours from now. And this is saying the leading edge of the precipitation could be into the Illinois. Let's just sort of take a look at it. Let's back it out. Let's talk about where it's at right now. Throw the radar back on, and yep, there you know, there you go. A little bit of snow out here. Notice the rain starting to move in. This is all moving this direction, while the snows are kind of moving this way. The we're moving this way with with the rain, and so um, take that. And you, you see that 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 looks about right. Move this forward in time by uh, 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. Uh, rain. For the precipitation type over most all of southern indiana so you'll have some scattered showers i suspect with this then as we move through the day notice how this low tracks right along the ohio river so this would have the low centered uh right over say the owensboro area and then as i click at one forward in time notice that it tracks right along the ohio river moves up in here pretty much over cincinnati so pretty much just hugs the ohio river so even even here at one o'clock, we're all rain in southern Indiana from the way this depicts things. So I wouldn't have any hesitation about church services in the morning. Don't think there would be any reason to cancel anything if this particular um, scenario does pan out. Uh, we'll have to now cast it in the morning, but it sure looks uh, better and better for those of us who are, are churchgoers in the morning. 
and uh, followers of Christ to see, uh, to, you know, to not have to cancel services. So uh, I suppose that's, that's a good thing. Um, then quickly as you go here to um, 7 o'clock on Sunday night, notice we're back to all snow by then. So, uh, and, and then, of course, if I just put it forward in time, it's eventually gone. And uh, once it changes to snow, what we'll see is it'll move out pretty quickly. Let me find what I did with... Uh, hold on just a second. I need to... Let me show you the future radar, but hold on just a second. I need to pull that up. Okay, here we go. I've got our future radar from the 4-kilometer NAM pulled out. My apologies for kind of the jumpiness, and uh, I'm just flat out tired, folks. I've not gotten a lot of sleep tracking this the past couple of nights, and... Uh, uh, yeah. But let's, uh, let's put this into motion here a little bit. It's 11 o'clock here, and here's what the future radar looks like. Let's just kind of verify this real quick to see whether we're getting it. A little bit of snow, the way the, the 4-kilometer NAM says towards St. Louis, a few isolated showers breaking out. Uh, if you see that, that's pretty much exactly what you see. So that that's, gives us confidence, a line of snow to our north. There's the line of snow to our north. So that's good, at least a few hours out into this. It's still getting it right. We'll say this, I didn't favor the NAM very much before, but um, I, I'm, I'm liking the NAM more and more as time goes by. And uh, it's, it's not got, it, it's got its imperfections. It's, you know, it, it, it's, we're warmer than what it was saying today. So again, as I've been saying, take everything with a grain of salt. Here we go. We're now at seven o'clock on the future radar Sunday morning. And you got a little bit of rain spreading into us in Illinois, moving in. Nine o'clock, here's 10 o'clock, here's 11 o'clock, here's noon. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you notice we're still all rain in southern Indiana for the most part. You're not seeing any changeover to snow until you get up to uh, north of Vincennes, more towards Terre Haute area. Bloomington even looks like it's still rain at this time on that. Here we are at, at 3 o'clock and then 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, we're finally starting to change to snow around the Evansville area, moving up into Vincennes and Washington. That snow starts to overtake our area as we go into here at 6 o'clock. But notice how quickly as we move through time, it, it cuts off. So once it does go to all snow, it will quickly go to all snow. But the way the future radar is indicating to me at this point, it looks like it's, it's going to be very uh, quick for us to end now. You see heavy, heavy, heavy snows up in northern Indiana. So I know there are a handful of people who do follow us from uh, the northern Indiana counties. Even though we are southern, I am southern Indiana weather, and we focus on southern Indiana. Uh, I, I, I do talk a lot about from the entire state. And if you are viewing us from the northern part of the state, folks, you're going to get hammered with snow. This is where the six to twelve inches pluses is, is, is going to fall, and, and it's that has shifted up to the north. So you guys are going to get blessed with a bunch of snow uh, down here in the southern part of the state. Though I, you know, I really. Um, some of the snowfall accumulation map that I had earlier is going to need to be changed. Um, I believe I had it as sort of a two to five inch. Let's just understand that that five is probably going to be the max that we're going to get out of it. I don't think that we're going to see a four to eight band here anymore. I think you can pretty much just uh, basically say from uh, this area in, in southern Indiana, well, I, I, I drew that really poorly. Let's include the entire area, basically. And what we'll say is, uh, if we're just going to revise things, I would probably say two to four inches is more likely now based on the trends uh, that I'm seeing. So I'll revise that in the morning. I'm not going to revise a snowcast map right now. I'll wait till all of the, the model trends are, are done overnight and we'll get into a sort of a now casting situation. But again, I don't think that this is going to be a major event based on the way things are panning out. Now, what will be a major event still is the cold and the GFS. I just wanted to point this out very quickly. is still taking us below normal, even on, on um, even with the less snowpack. So that's the kind of Arctic air mass that we're dealing with. Uh, the North Pole is coming from a visit, and I mean that very literally. Uh, this air is coming down from that region, and uh, you know the GFS still has us at a negative five by the time you wake up on Monday morning, and that's even with very low snowpack down here in this part of the state. You see negative 16, negative 17, negative 18, where you've got that heavier snowpack. So, and uh, and it looks like we're going to have to deal with at least a couple of, of days worth of these below zero temperatures, wind chills even 20 to 30 below at times too. So. Not pleasant. I'll have another update uh, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. I'll, I'll try to have another. I don't know if it'll be a video update or, or not, but I'll have another update on the page for you in the morning. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. I'll talk to you tomorrow, folks. Stay safe.